Bismillah. So we learned how to use the Arduino uh, C programming in manual, uh, on off, P control, and now as a PID or PI control. So just a reminder, this slide from previous videos, uh, that my PI control or PID is multiplying the error by a gain. This is the proportional control or the P control and multiplying the error by the rate of change, uh, sorry, by the, uh, the integration of the error. Uh, and by again, this is really the integration control and multiplying the error by the rate of change of the gain is, uh, and again, this is the, the D control. Since I have a noisy system, a very fast, we, we, we learned this previously, uh, I can't, the D control will, will actually add more noise to my system. So I'm just using a PI control, P plus I control. And now we will, previously the, the integration was done uh, by, by Simulink. Uh, I'm just using one over S and in the PLC, the PID compact dealt with integration. I didn't really deal with the integration itself. So I need to, to a way how to represent integration inside an Arduino, how to deal with it. Let's take this curve and this curve, let's say it's representing my error. Uh, remember, we said integration is the area under the curve. Uh, one of the definitions of the integration is the area under the curve. So if I took uh, an intervals, they are equal interval, let's say every one second, and every one second, I'm reading the value of the error. If I multiply this value by the interval, I'm getting this area. If I add this area by the second value I'm reading multiplied by the interval, I'm getting also this area. So this plus this plus the third reading times the interval, fourth reading times the interval, and so on. If I do this, I will have an approximate value of the area under the curve. Yes, it's not exact, but it is fair enough. So the integral action I can represent it, and this is a numerical analysis method. There is a lot of methods, but this is the simplest one. I'll just take the interval, let's say every one second, I multiply it by the error value and adding the interval of the second one multiplied by the error and so on. Uh, just a, a mathematical uh, uh, simplification. If it's, they are all the same interval. It's all, uh, let's say, assume it's, they are all one second. So if I can, can take the interval as a common, I will be left by its interval times error value one plus error value two and so on. So the integral control action itself is a KI, a gain, I can choose a gain, and I'll multiply it by the integral action. So the integral control is a gain times the integral action, this is how uh, to represent uh, an integration in, in, uh, uh, in C. There are a lot of methods to do this. This is just one of the simplest one, and it's easy to understand. So let's go to uh, the code. Uh, similar to the code we did in on, off and P control, uh, I still have my sensor, my, my input, my actuator, my process value, set point. And the same as the error, we, we declare the P gain. Now I'm adding an I gain. This is my KI. So I have my P gain, I have my I gain. Now I'm just having a variable in the integral action. We just saw how to calculate it. And we need uh, to learn how to use uh, the interval. So as we saw the integral, I'm, I'm reading the value, the error every second or every uh, 0.1 second. So I need the previous millis, interval, and current millis. I need to declare those variables. To understand this previous millis and, uh, and current millis, you can check also the examples of uh, the Arduino. If you go to examples, you can check uh, digital blink without delay. Uh, if you want to blink an LED without delay, we are using exactly the same technique of, uh, of the millis. So what, what is millis? Uh, we will see it in a second. Uh, once the Arduino starts, 
uh, there is a counter inside the Arduino counting the milliseconds, and this will restart only after I think 70 days or so. So uh, if I can keep a track of how much is the value of this counter and subtract the current one with the previous one, I can uh, exactly know how many milliseconds passed and do my, my reading action. So if I go to the loop, I'm reading the process va uh, variable normally, analog read through the sensor. I'm reading my set point through the potentiometer. Now I'm reading the, the, the millis, the number of the millis inside the Arduino. So now I'm having if my current millis minus the previous millis. Remember, at the beginning, this value is zero. So if my current millis minus the previous one is uh, greater or equal than interval, remember, uh, my goal is to have it equal. But uh, if I put just equal, the, the Arduino is not that precise. So it probably go beyond and I will stuck. So it's very important to use greater or equal. And I defined the interval already here. Uh, my interval is it's 100, so it's a 0.1 uh, second. If I'm choosing 1,000, mean it's every second. Uh, just assume I'm using the interval as 1,000 uh, or a one second. So uh, back here, my so if this is correct, then I'll store the value of the current millis in the variable of the previous milli so that I can use it in the next round. My error is always set point minus PV. My integral action is the integral action plus uh, uh, plus the error. Remember, we uh, th this is is just I'm adding the value, the previous value of the error to itself. This is the integral uh, the integral action uh, value. But the only thing that missing here is actually the interval. Assuming my interval is uh, is one second. Multiplying one by this is not really uh, something. Uh, it's the same value. So I'm just as uh, I'm, I'm not multiplying it by the interval, and I can divide the I gain by by a, a ten, and I will have the same value. So my control output now my controller output is the P gain times the error. This is the proportional action plus an I gain and the integral action. So this is my uh, my uh, integral controller. So PI control is P control plus integral control. And also I'm putting a cap on top of it. Uh, if it is more than 255, then uh, put it at 255. It is lower than zero than zero. And writing this value to my uh, actuator. And let's see how it will behave. Uh, I'll start the serial monitor, and you can notice right away, I'll take the auto scroll off. My set point is 460, 476. My PV is really 476, 75, 76. My P gain is 0.1, and my I gain is 0.1. I, I chose I gain as a 0.1 because I deleted the integral, the interval from my calculation. Uh, I, I used it. So if, if I put the interval, which is a 0.1 second, this value then will be 1, not 0.1. So it's, it's just uh, I'm playing with the math to have an easier code. But notice, this won't happen in P control only. Reaching the set point is exactly the process variable is exactly the set point. I'm just able to to reach this because i'm using the integral control we said it, they call it also a reset because it eliminates the steady state error so if i change my set point so my set point is 70 uh, 765 i can see here i'm really reaching it yes it's uh, hovering around but i'm definitely reaching it I'll increase it a little bit, 820. And the lovely thing about this, if I remove uh, the box, I mean there is a noise, I will see, notice now, my controller output was at 40. Okay, I'm taking it, I'm having more ambient light. See, the control output value is really decreasing from what it was, but the process value 
it's catching back to, to, to the set point. And this is the lovely thing about the PI control. It will eliminate the noise till my PV is really catching to the set point. Uh, and notice my control output is 35. If I put box back, you notice that my control output increase in order to 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 the process value really catch back to my set point. And uh, I did a lot of trial and error to find the, the, the perfect value. So I did some tuning uh, to find the P gain value and the I gain value. So this is the behavior of uh, a PI control and how to apply it uh, using C. Uh, next, we will just show how to to uh, the schematics of an op-amp to do the same things with op-amp.